<laughs> Hi, I'd like to welcome back the readers of Pro Nature Photographer for another conversation with landscape photographer David Munch. David's here today to share his portfolio, the Oregon Mountains, which is portfolio number 104. And the Oregon Mountains are in southern New Mexico near Las Cruces, and David has photographed down there many times, and he's here to tell us about it and show us some images. Welcome, David. Well, thank you, Charlie. Uh, this is a pretty exciting event, as this may be our newest uh, national monument. Could be signed in any time, and I'm fascinated by the country uh, and glad to share some of my uh, images from back from the 60s all the way through the 90s that I took uh, uh, put some good time up in some of the wilder aspects of these this mountain range and the other uh, marginal mountains uh, close by along mm -hmm. the this is between the Rio Grande uh, and the uh, plains and also on the west side of the Rio Grande but uh, I really fascinated uh, in the, what it is, the Oregon Mountains are a very serrated, dramatic ridge line. As you are in Las Cruces, New Mexico, you look out, it is uh, front and center. It's always on the horizon, gives you a sense of being in a sacred place. Mm -hmm. And I'm fascinated by time spent up in the mountains on various trails, and it's being developed somewhat now. But uh, uh, it, it, what it does, what the, here's an explanation of it, uh, it's a broad expanse of the Chihuahuan Desert grasslands, mm -hmm. Sky Island peaks, dramatic canyons, and historic ruins known as the Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it's qu quite a crossroads. Uh, you have the Butterfield stage route has gone through here. The El Camino Real goes north-south through here, connecting up with uh, Spanish Mexico and the northern parts of Santa Fe and uh, points beyond. Uh, and you also have archaeological sites. There's some of them un unexplored at this point, mm -hmm. but some have been, there's some known, and it's just jotted down in a lot of research that's been done, but it's not complete. A lot to go yet. And that are archaeological uh, rock art sites. Uh, that's uh, petroglyphs, pictographs that depict uh, mostly Mugion, uh, Jornada Mugion ancestry that uh, created them early on. And then, of course, Apache uh, uh, influence was quite strong coming through it. It hones down to what I found fascinating through time is the actual ridge line, a granite ridge line of the uh, Oregon Mountains. Very serrated, very dramatic on its own. It's a world, uh, to me, a world image of our planet, from mm -hmm. our planet. And uh, I'm quite excited about it. And of course, when you get into it, you start really mixing up the uh, uh, desert, the Chihuahuan Desert coming up from Mexico in this area, and it enters up into high desert and right on up into the uh, uh, there, the uh, Ponderosa Forest up above. Uh, alligator juniper are the predominant uh, middle trees all around it. There are mostly all alligator junipers are the predominant trees. And of course, you have your yucca and your desert cactus, but mostly down below. But uh, it still reaches way up high in there, and some of my earliest uh, uh, trips in there were just hiking up without trail into, into the front. But anyway, this is a kind of a, a placement of uh, this very uh, rich, I, I consider it a sacred, uh, it consists of three ranges, actually, the part they're considering for a national monument, and that is the Uva mountains, Sierra mm -hmm. Uvas, which are on the west side of the the uh, Rio Grande, and then the Potrillo mountain area, which is a volcanic Malpai sand area predominantly south of the Interstate 10 mm -hmm. and to the border with Mexico and just west of El Paso, uh, uh, the crossings there at Santa Teresa. Quite wild areas, but uh, people locally, of course, know about them quite a bit. 
but a very wild, very uh, imposing desert kind of environment. Well, you know, it's interesting because I honestly, being from the Pacific Northwest, wasn't aware of the Oregon Mountains. I've photographed around uh, New Mexico a number of times, and then once we discussed uh, your portfolio and I started looking at the images, I was going, wow, and I got online, did a little bit of research, and there's really quite a bit of interesting history and scenic uh, abundance of all types of uh, species, quite a bit elevation differences between different areas of the mountains, and I'm thinking I need to go down there, so uh, I'm looking forward to discussing your images. Well, glad to share it with you here. Really am because it's and with people because it's uh, it's quite imposing and it's very subtle. But uh, uh, if you uh, talk to anybody from Las Cruces, uh, you're going to find uh, this is uh, really a, a great uh, skyline. I call it mm-hmm. a sky island. It's not quite up into deep forest, but the elevation does uh, reach into the the forest areas, uh, and that to me is a sky island. And if you go on down to El Paso, the Franklin Mountains, which follow in the Rocky Mountain chain right south of the uh, Oregon Mountains, runs right to where you drop down into to El Paso. So that's their range. But uh-huh. this is Las Cruces background. <laughs> this is their there we all are proud of the mountains behind us in portland the mount hood that kind of thing it's very very prominent and not necessarily so well known and i'm excited to be able to talk about it today i right well i suggest we get started and uh, i've just brought up the first image well this is this is a century plant uh, design which i never knew quite where it was it's taken in the early 1960s mm-hmm. i mean the late 1960s and I have wondered where that was. It's it's one of the first ones that I've seen, and what I always consider my my starter on uh, these designs of the agaves or cactus, uh, looking directly down on them like a air flying over them, literally. But this is one of this is the prominent one. I finally found where it was because these images I've discovered they're from four by five. Uh, film images, uh, and I'll mention the dates on some of them as we go along. Well, it's uh, got some very soft light on it, and, and, and it's crisp on the edges. I like the little white highlights on sides of each of the uh, petals there, so it's really got a well, lot this, of pop to it. Well, this really has the, uh, the contrast between the, you know, the cactus, the spiny desert part of the desert. Hmm. I, I don't know. I feel the symmetry of so many of the things uh, for survival is just fascinating. And this is one that uh, that uh, brings you a beautiful design and a repetitive pattern, but then is it's got the spines in your face. And I uh, I find this very challenging and exciting. Uh, this to me makes makes up the desert uh, one of the desert prominent desert uh, uh, type imaging. Yeah, very nice. Our next image is um, looks like it's up very high. Maybe you're on top of a mountain. Uh, this this represents yeah this was in in the late 1960s also I just uh, traipsed up into the heart of the Oregon Mountains from the west side and with no trail and we'll never forget it mm-hmm. because climbing through cat claw cactus cat claw all kinds of spiny things but I was excited to get up into the higher reaches which are very uh, dramatic and bold but subtle you don't you don't see them from below and that is I think it was a white fur great big uh, white fur and uh, of course uh, ponderosa uh, were up in this area and just in little pockets you might have one tree and the rest is rock mm-hmm. and it's quite exciting and this is one image that I took of it. it's an alligator juniper up pretty high it looks like probably seven eight nine oh, the peak on top the peaks go to nine thousand wow so this is probably about eight thousand feet uh in your desert to forest mm-hmm. uh, it's a part of the sky island image images that i uh found very exciting coming right out of the desert yes absolutely i hope you didn't have to start down there at the bottom in the valley uh, to get up here. I did. Oh, boy. I did. Oh, boy. Yeah, this was up yeah. the alluvial and uh, just found a canyon uh, that seemed to have access to it until you hit the rocks. And mm-hmm. when you get to the rocks, it's all, it's literally climbing. 
it's mostly climbing and I didn't do that. I just uh, tried to find some open spots to get into a heartland of this uh, sure. sacred place. Up on tops where you find the trees? Uh, well, this was this image looks like a top rock area, and mm -hmm. I, that's yes. But yeah. on the north side, you have the Ponderosa Forest. One of the trails is a pine called the Pine uh, Desert Trail, and you get into groves of Ponderosa. And believe me, northern in the Rockies, this is standard fare over in Arizona on the Mogollon Rim. Oh, uh, you have all the Ponderosa, great Ponderosa Forest. Well, this will be a it might be a one tree grove mm -hmm. or four or five trees and then it's rock or desert and uh, this is very fast on the north side where you get a little more moisture content and uh, the snow lingers also mm -hmm. yeah it's very nice our next image here is a uh, large rock with some very interesting mountains in the background this must be a different area uh, yes, this is on the northeast side uh, toward White Sands, uh, which, by the way, White Sands National Monument is just uh, a few miles to the northeast from this area, Geary Springs area. This is the road, a nice paved road running right down to the campground and the start of the trailhead. This is a boulder which I found fascinating in that these were glacial erratics. I still can't believe it. Oh, wow. That you're in the desert, you have these rounded boulders coming. Uh, when you get up higher, they're lodged down in the canyons. And this is just in the alluvial to the northeast. Mm -hmm. And look at it. It's just rounded just like a glacier erratic should be. And I, right. it's still hard to believe. But right. these all, and in this next image, the same thing. The boulders are laying uh, like uh, glacial artifacts. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just can't believe it. But the tops are all granted in this part of the range. It does change a little bit south and go into uh, more chocolate, uh, dark brown, uh, uh, and different uh, quality of mountains. But they're hooked together. They're right together, and they just blend. But this is these are glacial erratics, and that's uh, number four has the same uh, 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 image right from a similar area as this last one here uh -huh. with the single boulder. Well, I've moved on to the next image uh, that you were describing there and showing these glacial erratics and it's pretty amazing i mean that was uh, obviously happened before i was here and, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah i don't go that far back either <laughs> but yeah you're right absolutely fascinating and so different than what you're seeing on the horizon there with the the real oh it, it is you can see where they came from but why are they rounded so nicely mm -hmm. why are they what causes that i'd love to know Right. Other than than uh, glacial erratics from glacial times past, which sure. I find hard to believe, but that's it explains it by just looking at the boulders. I've seen enough in Yosemite and Wind River Range and other places. What what uh, glaciers will polish them, round them off, and roll them on down into the lower reaches. Mm -hmm. And it just uh, looks like it. Yes. Yes. And what I love about this again, this is. Um, you know, you're the large foreground with some rocks we can see through leading us up to the jagged peaks. To me, this is a, a composition begging for a camera. Uh, yes, yes, and that just needs a little light, and I think I've fared well. It's kind of late mm -hmm. afternoon, but uh, uh, not your direct sunlight. I love that. That's, right. That's, that's the form exp of expression I really like. Yes, very nice. Okay, our next one, well, the weather's changed here a little bit. Well, this one's titled Desert Snows, 1965. Uh, this was, I remember distinctly uh, waiting out there. It snowed quite profusely. Uh, this is on the west side, looking at the top Oregon Mountain and uh, other peaks to the northwest side. And it just snowed on and on. And I waited with bated breath to just have it clear a little bit. I couldn't stand myself waiting. It was a, like an all-day wait. Uh -huh. And this is one of those that uh, you'll get quite a bit of argument on anybody waiting for an image to happen. And uh, I have done that through time. I've also mm -hmm. just happened on something instantly, and it's all over in a minute or oh, in five right. seconds. But this one, this one, I waited quite a while. 
and was quite pleased to see the mountains come just out and with a fresh uh -huh. layer of uh, white stuff. It just shows you that this is a, a Rocky Mountain range. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, uh, and can pick up uh, from four to 5,000 feet on up to uh, anywhere, you know, in the Sacramentos and uh, uh, Sierra Blanca are uh, up to 12,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, this one goes to 9,000 feet, uh, the Oregon Mountain. Right. And that's you have right in the middle of this picture, actually. But it was it was fun. This is one of those timeless moments that just uh, happens in you. You're, you have to be there, F-11, and be there, and yeah. yet I waited about five hours. <laughs> yeah, so was this uh, mountain socked in with the clouds and snowing up there, and you couldn't really see it, so you were waiting? Uh, for a long time, yes. Yeah. So I was uh, just waiting for it to expose it, so I didn't okay. need sun on it. Yeah. I just wanted to see there's something about connecting the desert uh, yuccas uh, and the desert grasslands with the high... Uh, uh, contrast with a snowing uh, sure. event, which can happen any month uh, from November on through uh, April. Right. Well, it delivered, and it delivered well, because when it finally broke, it even brought you in a little bit of light to kind of put some highlights across the mountain. Yeah, it, I love this kind of soft, ambient light. Yeah. Without the sun being uh, creating light and shadow, this is just forms and uh, a little more mysterious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just enough powerful foreground elements to really make that interesting as well. So, Yeah, it lets you know where you are. Yes. Exactly. Well, our next shot here is uh, much more dramatic. Hard light on a hard surface. Well, this is over now going over the Potrillo Mountains, which are on the west side from Las Cruces and Mesilla. Mm -hmm. uh, a large area that I, this is 1985. The Oregon Mountains are in the distance. This is one of the three peak areas that they are considering for a national monument. Mm -hmm. And it happens to connect up with the Oregon Mountains are way off in the distance. They, you can't get away from them. But anyway, this is a lava area, Malpai, which includes uh, cross-bedded and other sand dunes uh, just up from the river and into the west in the Potrillo Mountain area. Uh -huh. And this is a facade of lava, which I found very intriguing in the morning, very early. Yeah, and I really like the little hint of the mountains at the very top. Well, that's the Oregon that Mountains. You yep. can't, it's just like Navajo Mountain. You mm -hmm. can't get away. When you're anywhere in that whole area, <laughs> right. they seem to dominate and will tell you where you are. And this is reminds me of... Uh, uh, Native Americans, the Indians, find having their sacred uh, points that they call homeland. And right. you, you, the Navajos have them, the four of them, the peaks. They're way off somewhere. But when you see them, this gives you a sense of your homeland, of, exactly. your, of the sacred place. And they're there, and mm -hmm. you know you're there. And it's very intriguing how you can do it. It's like Navajo Mountain in the southern Utah, northern Arizona there. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective. I hadn't really thought of them as sort of natural beacons out there telling us where we yeah. are. Uh, Tell, yeah, but just a little, showing the perimeters of your homeland. Yeah, exactly. Well, the next image here, is this in the same area, just a even closer detail? Okay, that's yeah, that's just a lichen on volcanics uh -huh. uh, in the Potrillo's Malpai. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just look at it. It was just a design on the north side of a, ro of a volcanic rock. And the variety of uh, lichen uh, life, I just found that intriguing mm -hmm. as an abstract. Right. Yeah, I love it. I think it's great. Very nice. So this is in the same area you just described, the lava lands? Uh, yes, that's uh -huh. the Potrillo Mountain, okay. uh, Malpai of sand and volcanic uh, uh, craters out there. Uh, and this is just another uh, detail. Very nice. Okay, I've moved on to the next image here, which is uh, beautiful sand dunes, distant mountains, and either some very early or late light. This is very powerful. Yes, this is this is um, reminiscent of the Mojave uh, uh, dune massives and uh, things I love to do in the in the Red Rock country with the sand, uh, uh, the piles of sand, which I consider just uh, really expressive of our Southwest desert. Mm -hmm. uh, the Oregon Mountains, again, are there. This is in the Portrillo Malpai area, looking northeast toward there. The Oregon Mountains, again. 
So uh, you, these things really connect. And what's unique about this one, it's very early, as you, you imagined, uh, early or late light. Well, this is early light uh, with cross-bedding. You have a predominant blowing from the west, uh, the sand ripples lined up uh, going north-south. And then you have this fresh cross-bedding of winds on top of it mm -hmm. that was just, uh, who knows how it developed. But anyway, you, that's, if you've seen some of the uh, petrified sand dunes in somewhere uh, different places in the southwest, you'll see cross-bedding represented very well in Zion and around in yeah. the, uh, Navajo sandstone. A lot of that is, and then this is a form of it in the, in the live uh, version. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is very early light, and I, I love the feel of space oh, yeah. and this kind of a thing. Very, very powerful, and really gives you that feeling of the of a twilight or pre-dawn. Uh, yeah, it's mysterious. It exactly. gives you a sense of mystery for the desert. Next image here, a little bit different. Sunrise or sunset, sand dunes again. How did you do the lighting on the foreground? Uh, you know, I think at that time I uh, used a flash. It's dawn. It's before. Well, the sun is just appearing, and this is one of my timeless moments, kind of a thing. And there are the Oregon Mountains again. This is very near the other cross bedding uh, sand dune uh, image. Uh, the light in front was probably a flash unit that I held high. Mm -hmm. uh, this is with the four by five again for film, so I had longer timing. And I uh, threw, threw a flash in uh, uh, just to give it a sense of closeness, whereas it would be pretty dark. And uh, uh, just that's what I felt was needed there at that time. So that's it. Uh, I think it can be printed a little bit better. There's some things I'd like to do. But mm -hmm. essentially, you have that, that dawn impression and follows very nicely from the other sand one. It's the same place, the Protrio mountains, uh -huh. uh, part of that uh, Oregon Mountains desert peak situation. Yeah, very nice. And uh, are these the same dunes as the previous image? Yes, uh -huh. yes, they are. Okay. They might be 100 yards apart. I yeah. don't know. Uh, could No, the clouds are different. So this is uh, another time and maybe very close, but uh, uh, still just west of, uh, of Las, southwest of Mesilla and Las Cruces, mm -hmm. and in the Portrillo, probably the western end of the, this little range that's uh, not too high, not too prominent, but uh, has very interesting wildlands in there, volcanic and sand. Very nice. Okay, so our next image is sand dunes again with uh, some nice patterns going across the sand and some other visual elements that you've added to the composition. Yes, this is uh, the same Malpai uh, sands in the Portrillo Mountains, uh, looking at the Oregon Mountains again, but a different uh, version of more of the edge of the dunes with the ripples uh, following the contours of plant life there. Mm -hmm. There are uh, yuccas up in the center, and uh, I find that fascinating how dunes move and will bury, half-bury some things, and so you have contrast within... Uh, a small area which are fascinating to me and I'm always out looking for foregrounds uh, for landscape that uh, I I found interesting and I'm up and you know you're you're on a, in the light you have the right light and then uh, it's searching for things that intrigue me and that I uh, find emotionally uh, strong and represent and then they become memories like this this mm -hmm. was 1985 uh, I, I relate to this very quickly as uh, part of me, and uh, uh, you're seeing it right here, and that's the, the uh, your feet. You can walk right into this and walk on, and there are the Oregon Mountains again. So I, I uh, am sticking right to script. <laughs> 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 you can't get away from them. Yeah. So there you are. Well, again, what I like is I like the foreground elements of the branches leading us to the next set. Yuccas or uh, they're yuccas, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. and, uh, but then the mountains on the horizon sort of tells the story, almost like these trees and yuccas are actors in the big play, so to speak, of the yes, dunes uh -huh, and the mountains on the big the stage, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're leading on the yucca. Uh, stalks even lead right on up to the mountains. Your, your eye is taking a three-dimensional trip, and that's what I'm all about. Mm -hmm. I love to yeah. have that happen. Uh, 
so that you're excited and I hope uh, uh, people uh, uh, viewers can get, get a feeling of that same thing and that's mm -hmm. where then I feel I've done my uh, my job exactly and then again complimented by great lighting tells a real complete story yes this is late afternoon this oh, one wow. is late yeah. instead of early in the morning but it uh -huh. looks similar to the others but this is l late afternoon so uh, and probably in winter uh -huh. probably uh, uh, somewhere in February March April at the latest mm -hmm. uh, so you get you get the raw light and it's uh, much more magical uh, early and late and also you don't have yet the big thunderstorms which yeah. are predominant around here they really happen in this area we had one the other day but uh, most of the time it's uh, May on, but July and August uh, you really get your monsoonal type uh, mm -hmm. showering that can be pretty strong, right. very uh, powerful, and that's where the moisture has been coming lately in this drought uh, time right now. is the only time you may get in some areas. They're very ephemeral, but uh, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And, of course, this is working around the lighting and thinking of lighting uh, uh, of a winter lighting, and that's Absolutely. why I like it. And it also isn't so hot. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's part of it. That's that is part, part of, of me. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one. Here we've got a wide shot of uh, more of the lava fields, it looks like, with mountains in the background. Yes, this is uh, Adon Crater, they call it, I believe, uh, south of the interstate, uh, right in the Potrillo Mountains in the wildest part of, of the area. I was fascinated by the volcanics, pure volcanics of this area. The spatter cones and uh, lava flow, uh, you, could, you could just feel it and be in a complete uh, sense of it. It seemed like it just happened. And, of course, in the desert areas like this, it can be preserved uh, uh, quite a long time and mm -hmm. look very fresh. So this is, uh, this, I was just fascinated by the skyline of this uh, lava poking up uh, into uh, afternoon uh, light. Oh, right. Late in the day, it looks like. Uh, yeah, yeah, quite late. Uh -huh. No clouds, kind of the, the boring time, but uh, uh, fascinated by how it starts to uh, get a sense of inner earth light that, that you have where it's, it's uh, warm and not too detailed so that uh, you get a sense of the place rather than... Uh, uh, detail of lava we've all seen that so often in volcanics but uh, this is more the the mystery of the timing of it mm -hmm. and through time uh, how these uh, things form and develop and then wear down and you catch them at a certain time and still can evoke the the uh, the mystery of of uh, inner earth uh, happenings which you may not be there you may not witness them but you get a sense of it right that's fun, that's right. fun. Yeah, how many times do you think you've been down there? Do you recall to to this region? I have only been in the in these mountains, Potrillo's only only two times, uh -huh. only two times on this one. Yeah, it, it was pretty wild. It's all four wheel. It was four wheel drive uh, uh -huh. uh, work, and uh, I would be uh, alone on these, and was very careful to. Uh, not get uh, caught way out there somewhere, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. but uh, this was easily accessible uh, with four-wheel drive, so yeah. I, at that point... Uh, well, we're seeing I'd... quite a collection of uh, great images for just a couple visits, so you... Um, That's on you the Portrillo Mountains, but yeah. I did on the Oregon Mountains was a different story. There okay. I've been visiting them all along mm -hmm. through time and uh, when I could. I'm fascinated by the place but early on. This isn't just a new thing. I'm, I'm very happy to see it being considered for major uh, uh, designation. I mm -hmm. really am. Yes. Well, we'll cross our fingers on that. Yes, yes. Okay. It's, protecting, it's protecting and preserving some great wilderness areas, some, some uh, archaeological sites that are very important and uh, need further research and study and then preservation because mm -hmm. it's uh, is a rich area, very rich uh, country, and I'm very pleased to see it. Uh, I, I feel the Oregon Mountains themselves could end uh, this. I'll be stepping in it, uh, but uh, could be a national park uh, very oh, wow. easily, and some of our national monuments easily could be. 
uh, become, uh, many of them have. Mm -hmm. Grand Canyon, uh, the west side end was a monument for a while. And so a lot of these uh, will can go over to parks status, and I, uh, that fascinates me here. I think just the Oregon Mountains alone, but you never know mm -hmm. with the richness of archaeology, at least should be designated wilderness and uh, for study areas and sure, that's important sure yeah well i yeah. know there's an organization when i was researching these mountains uh, for this uh, discussion with you I, I know there's an organization that's pushing hard to get this into national park or national monument status so oh yes we'll yes. see how that goes yes there's a lot of uh, especially by uh, senator heinrich and uh udall mm -hmm. who proposed it back last year and uh now are pushing through the bill and hopefully uh, could be signed. Right, right. Well, okay, our next image here is, uh, well, a very dramatic stormy sky with um, a lit up foreground. Were you using a flashlight or a flash or? Uh, actually, this is where I started with, I have where I think that I'm right on this, but I had and you can see that it's ready to rain heavily, and it mm -hmm. had been, and it did afterward rain very heavily. This is from the northwest side. A anyway, they were richly in bloom. This is your middle of summer. Uh, it was uh, actually, I drove up to it, and the lights reached these plants just perfectly. I just went out and photographed. But sometimes I do take flash and just hit them mm -hmm. in the so it doesn't hit anything in the back and you have a, a dramatic contrast this is drama this is a drama queen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, i i just love it because of yeah. the deep dark blue of uh uh storms coming and going uh with with the blooming uh, desert uh, uh which they work together to me very well there's uh -huh. a good uh, uh companionship there between these but it's drama this is right. the drama well, it's very powerful, uh, you know, that dark sky and then the lit-up foreground. It's a, it's a unique way of lighting. Yeah. That's neat. Okay, we're moving on to uh, a stormy day in the mountains up high with some cactus in the foreground. Yeah, this is epitome, for me, the epitome of uh, wildness. These are pr a prickly pear hanging right out of a rock, living right out of rock, uh, right in front of the lower end of the Oregon Mountains, uh, just by lower end, I mean just from the middle on down, is a different type of rock, and I'm way back up in there uh, uh, below, though still in the alluvial, still down in the canyons, and the sense of wildness of cactus uh, hanging on to rugged desert peaks, this to me ep epitomizes the, the wildness of any landscape, mm -hmm. I, I love this kind of a thing because it uh, it, it makes sure you realize how uh, uh, people have survived in on this, and yet plant life is is clinging on and loves it this way, and you you're able to get a sense of uh, the wildness of desert. This is pure desert uh, uh, to me at its best. Right. Well, this image, this is really very powerful, even though, you know, it's kind of a flat lit, overcast, rainy, but I can almost feel the raindrops on me. And it's very powerful from the standpoint of making me and pro hopefully all the other viewers look at this and think and feel what it's like to be right there. Well, this is what was intriguing about it, it was raining. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, that's the best time to uh, s stroll by these uh, prickly pears when they're a little bit more moist and succulent. But that's the whole thing of this. this is a wash coming by here, and it's just hanging out there, and uh, you get a sense of it can be different in what I call ambient light and uh, wet. It does get mm -hmm. wet when in normal situations in normal years. Uh, you do have rain, and that's the moments of... Uh, contrasts and conflict that I, I just love to photograph and it's exciting. I really like this composition and, and these cactus in the foreground really gives us a really good perception of the depth. Yeah, and it's all about form, not mm -hmm. about light and shade, which just makes contrast. Right. This, this is just the form coming through so you see into it, but it's a little more mysterious, and you have more time to roam around in it and get a sense of it mm -hmm. in this quiet light. Yep. I like this a lot. 
And uh, okay, our next image is one of those lucky finds. I'm down in the desert and I've been looking for these types of uh, displays and here's a beautiful one. Well, this is the next day after the rain. <laughs> ah. No, it can't be that quick. <laughs> this, is, this, this is 1985. I don't imagine seeing this kind of bloom come so well, but in a good year it will have to. I mean, the claret cup cactus and yucca uh, will thrive and uh, just impress. This must have been a great year of rains in December, January, and February. And this is somewhere toward April uh, on the, uh, I saw on the east side. But uh, you just couldn't, it couldn't stop. There were so many blooms. It was, it was just, uh, uh, I, at that point in time, I thought, this is what happens all the time. And all I had to do is point the camera. And this is soft light, you'll notice. Mm -hmm. It is not harsh sunlight, so I give a sense of form again. You get a feel for the depth of it, and you can linger in the image more than just saying light. And this is this is wet or uh, uh, ambient light. Mm -hmm. and I really thrive on that. And there's another one coming up uh, soon. I believe the next image is one like that, mm -hmm. which is actually in the rain, too. I'll move on to that one. Let's see here. Oh, sure, yeah. Great, powerful foreground. This is this is one of my what some have called near far. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's a natural connection. You have the little claret cup uh, down in the uh, under the rocks, and this is in that where the erratic boulders were in the north uh, east side. Uh, in the rain, she's raining, and uh, the peaks are kind of misty up above. Uh, uh, this is a, definitely a winter shot, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel very strong about things like this. It's so different than what you expect of the desert. Oh, absolutely. It, it, yeah, and it's it's uh, a powerful kind of a quality that uh, I, just, I just thrive on. I hope uh, viewers get a sense of it. Uh, mm -hmm. You get your eyes full with a three-dimensional uh, perspective, and this, uh, I think, is... Which makes it actually abstract. Your eye cannot follow that much in one you have to move through it almost to a motion picture a video if you mm -hmm. are to see parts at a time but you can only look at one part at a time and to try and see the whole image is almost impossible and this to me makes these three-dimensional images abstract right. hard to say hard to believe but uh, i find that <laughs> happening and that's what I've, uh, this is kind of a mark and a style I've, uh, mm -hmm. I've thrived on, and I, I still gravitate toward this kind of an image. I want you to know what's right in front of you, what exactly. you might step on, you know, mm -hmm. what you might step on. Mm -hmm. Well, the last comment I wanted to make on this one is that I really like rainy days in these situations because the colors are just so vibrant. They're and so it smells rich. good. And it what? It smells good when you're out there oh. on a rainy day like that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it does. Oh, you desert, especially in mesquite. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, the, the the scent is just it's just marvelous and so restful. You feel so uh, uh, invigorated. Uh, the the colors all jump out because they're wet. Rocks almost some of them will almost become polished mm -hmm. with rain on them. Uh, just makes them uh, very. It's been like like they've been in a tumbler. Right. And this and this is just and it also is very uh, restful as you do this. Very. It's a creative kind of a a moment that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be right there with it. Nothing else gets in. The sounds are subdued dramatically, and you get right into it. Yes. And I, I find this uh, about as deep as you can get is, is some of these, unless I'm creating some wild abstract, which uh, we won't talk about now. No. <laughs> uh, th this, this is the epitome of uh, working in photographing, putting things together in the landscape. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I really, really like this image a lot. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some of your more recent work from, from down there. Yes, and these are uh, recent digital images from early March 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, pleased to connect them and compare them, not compare them, but 
make uh, a long-standing connection between the 1960s and 1980s uh, photographing with film, mm -hmm. and now we have, uh, this is strictly digital uh, work on these last four images with a great little visit down there uh, in southern New Mexico. We had the occasion to uh, uh, put together a piece for uh, outdoor photographer, and uh, Ruth uh, Ruth's going to be writing a piece on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just went down there, and I had made another visit, and of course had a nice storm to work through a little bit. So I had re uh, renewing some of the old uh, images I had in mind, and then visiting a couple new places. Mm -hmm. uh, Taking the, the first one, we can pass over it very quickly, are the boulders again with the rabbits, the rabbit uh, images of a real sharp rhyme. They're very prominent. Uh -huh. It's very striking. And there's another erratic. So I found another boulder, and that's, uh, that's two weekends ago. Yeah. Well, again, powerful in the foreground, soft round heading to the jagged almost shark's teeth, sawtooth look in the background. Yes, yes. I, I just love this uh, mm -hmm. combination here of, uh, you know, connecting, connecting the two together. Right. Uh, makes you think, makes you wonder, make, you know, you maybe you don't like rocks, but uh, I find that I'm personally very strongly relating to this kind of a thing because they connect. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, it's just, and they're powerful shapes too. Absolutely. That's, that's, uh, that's the one that stops you cold, really, mm -hmm. are these great shapes, and I love getting right to it. The next image, uh, this must be a historic dwelling. Well, this is up uh, Dripping Springs, a very popular uh, trail now into the west side. Uh, this was, um, well, there was a sanitarium up there, and then there, a doctor bought the place. It's up right into the mountains, in the canyon, Dripping Springs. Mm -hmm. And doctor bought it and uh, then built a hotel there for people to stay. Uh, oh. It is in the most gorgeous uh, ruin of state uh, that I've seen on something like this. And I had very soft, subdued light. Uh, these are partial ruins, but in... Uh, uh, remission. Everything is in, but in such perfect, historic, uh, uh, very nice job of completing. And this is one example of it. Uh, uh, the, this this window uh, with what's left at a certain timing. It's a mm -hmm. timeless moment because mm -hmm. it's it's in decay, but uh, nicely preserved to to represent a certain era. And it's late nineteenth century. Uh, uh, happenings there. Yeah. I just found the abstraction of it uh, fascinating. Right. A window almost to another world. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. Okay, the next one. Uh, must, same location? This is right below. This, uh, this is uh, the corrals mm -hmm. and building outbuildings that were the corral and uh, uh, stables for people that rode up uh, horseback to the hotel and uh, uh, sanitarium up there in the canyon further. This is just out a ways in the same mountains. I uh, uh, found it fascinating. These I always gravitate to anything that's a circle, but this one I also gravitate to. Uh, cowboys have, uh, have always... Uh, the extra wire is curled up and is always hanging on a fence post somewhere in the west. And oh, I right. just love I gravitate to them. And this where I sort of showed the environment with it and just made it a little fun. Mm -hmm. It's a straight shot, but it's it's kind of a, kind of a, a historic artifact, I feel, of different times. Yeah. Well, look at that setting. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it great? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, not only just to go up there and photograph the landscape, but what a great place to put your hotel or your house or oh, <laughs> something it, it like is, that. Oh, it is marvelous. You're right under the big... Uh, uh, peaks which draw storms and rain and and you're looking out for sunset you're looking out to the west and southwest northwest and uh, taking that in can be very profound mm -hmm. when you're right under the mountains if they're not dangerous and out just a little bit into an alluvial or not way at the bottom where it's uh, 
hot and dry and uh, you know everything is uh, is a different world down there. This is oh this was a lovely spot mm-hmm. about 6,500 okay. feet. Okay, is that pretty high up in the mountains or? Let's see if they're no, around No, this 000. is right at the base, right okay. at the base. This is the top of the alluvial mm-hmm. and where the canyons come out, and that's where that dripping springs is just on the left side of the wire there back in sure. the canyon there. It's just uh, they had a little dam uh, and a little reservoir there that they captured some water, and it drains pretty big mountain there, but uh, uh, still is desert, still is desert stuff. Yeah, I really, really like this. And uh, again, your circle in in the foreground definitely draws our attention, but leads us on into the picture and and uh, the house in the background or whatever structure that might be. So yeah, that was a part of the stables, yeah. about late nineteenth century stuff, and still holding on pretty well. And this was part of another structure, corral and mm-hmm. uh, water tank and things like that were right behind me. So it's uh, just this another interesting relic of time. Love it. Yeah, yeah, same here. Okay, this is very powerful. Again, another uh, uh, overcast, rainy-ish, flat light type of day and producing yet another really powerful image. Well, this is this is a, a timeless moment uh, because it uh, just came and went. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, in dry times, uh, the storms barely touch on the high peaks coming by, and then they're gone. Well, this was a... About an hour-long uh, snowstorm that's snowing up there, not fog, just lingered right on the top uh, 1,000 feet of the range and uh, was just a beautiful veil. For, for, for me, these are the, the classic times uh, mm-hmm. when, you, when you have this. And this rhyolite uh, outcrop in front is, is a real, it's, I think it's a real symbol of the Oregon Mountains. And the visitor center is right there, the Cox, the COX, uh, spelled C O X. Uh, mm-hmm. Visitor Center is right just behind where I am, and these rocks are very much a mark of identity for the rain. I feel a very nice uh, symbol. Uh, look like sandstone, but they're rhyolite, and uh, I had fun photographing them, placing them below the granite ridges of the, the, the serrated part of the range, uh, and then in the, uh, the fog appearing. Uh, snowstorm. Uh, it's just a moment in time, and uh, love it. And again, yeah. mysterious, and and you don't know where you are. This is this could, this could be high in the Rockies somewhere. You don't really necessarily have to be in the desert. And this could have a heavy snow sometime up above there. And oh, sure. Yet, it, it's just an image on its own. It stands mm-hmm. on its own. I love it. Well, what I'm really attracted to here, what really draws me in, there's a couple things going on. First of all, it's like the the image was blessed with light right on the foreground rocks, but not on the background rocks, which is a, you know, an indication of the clouds and the overcast. But there's a lot of separation going on there that really makes those stand out. And then I'm also a little subtler is the jagged peak at the top with the little notch right below it in the foreground. See, that seems all very nicely laid out. It is. That's that's why I, I I was mentioning about being a symbol for a place. These rocks actually, well, they could have been a little bit lighter, and it wasn't snowing or raining right where I was, but uh, it, it uh, they are lighter rocks. You can see them miles away, mm-hmm. so that helps quite a bit. And yet, it does look like a little more light and up above. It's a little more dense with the the uh, weather uh, mm-hmm. into the snowy mode. Uh, it just made it a little bit darker, and there are, those are darker rocks in the middle. So it, it, a lot of things working for it, but uh, it's just F11 and B there. It just was changing yeah, exactly. so fast, uh-huh. and uh, the, the ridge of rocks in the front extends both ways and has different. Uh, one of them. Uh, I don't have included here, I feel is a real symbol for the National Monument, and I wish it was here, but uh, real sharp, jagged peaks that replicate the top ridge of, of crags and pinnacles, exactly like it. And I got them together, and it was, uh, to me, it was just a, a knockout. They, yes. But they're in the same ridge of uh, rocks in close. Mm-hmm. Well, what a great collection of images, and... Uh... Very, very powerful, and, you know, I have to admit, as I did previously, that I wasn't familiar with the Oregon Mountains, but I'm really convinced now that this is a place that I'm going to put on my bucket list. I'd like to go down there and explore and see what kind of timeless moments might present themselves as well. But uh, I want to thank you again for showing those to us. 
Well, thank you, and uh, hope uh, people watch, and uh, any help uh, can be to make this the National Monument and uh, uh, become a protected area and uh, become a very wonderful, sacred place and highlight on our planet. Uh, yes. I'm telling you, it's just, I'm, I'm just fascinated by it. I'm pleased to be able to share these and a few words about them. Mm -hmm. Really pleased. Well, I'll tell our readers that there is a website, OregonMountains.com, and I'd tell, tell them everything they need to know about the, uh, the monument. And then I'd also like to mention um, your book, David Much's National Park, came out in 2013, and that can be found on Amazon, as well as uh, I have the link at the bottom of this, this video on Pro Nature Photographer. I'd also like to mention David's ebook, Top Rock, which is available on his website, davidmunchphotography.com. You can also go in and look at more of David's fine portfolios of exquisite landscape photography and also find links for his workshops. Well, once again, I want to thank you for joining us and sharing another wonderful portfolio and the story behind these fabulous images and especially sharing a location that probably not too many of our readers are familiar with. Great to share them. I'm really happy to do that. I'm quite enthusiastic about this area. I think it's just fabulous and pleased to be able to share them with people. Thank you, too. For okay. Well, thank you on behalf of all the readers of Pro Nature Photographer. Thank you, Charlie.